Look would. at you, BFFs. What's going on here? Hi, well, Tabby. I need to drink some. Uh, you get some ready for your Michael lift Hearn off? Power <laughs> pre workout because I haven't wow. tested my PR well, listen, in a long need... time and I'm a little bit nervous that it's going to be pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you look pretty jacked from here. I don't know if it's the shadows. I've intentionally that been eating a lot the last three, four oh, days oh, to yeah. try to prepare myself. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's great. So you got a house full. Oh, are you filming? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm filming. You're filming. Okay. I'm making Dora Good. happy too. <laughs> Where are you going, Dora? <laughs> so Mona's is here. She's filming. I don't know who this guy is, but he's still living with we're, me. We're getting the guests jacked up. That's all we're doing. Here. And he's taking care of Tavi right now. So and uh, Tavi is here. And then uh, you and me and Mo are going to leave to Vegas on Thursday. We're going to work Yay! Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm you driving. Mean Mona's driving? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mona's driving. That's the only <laughs> way you're going to get there fast. <laughs> Enjoy, my man. Here we go. All right. Will this increase my PR by a few Yes, it will. Yeah, yes, we don't tell will. anybody what's in it. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a little trend is in there. What the hell? <laughs> it's liquid trend. It's a new thing. Only at Phil Hearn Castle. All right, so what are you guys doing today, Michael? So, Tavi has not done his singles or his max lifts in a while. A long and time. so what I'm going to do is actually show him how to warm up for this to find out what your max is. But it's actually we're going to just incorporate this into a technically a powerlifting meet. Um, and how I would warm up for a power lift to meet, how I would compete, and how you would do those three lifts in the same day. It's okay, Dora, you can come in. Um, because you're not just gonna do a single on the squat, um, but we're gonna do it on the bench and then finish it off with the deadlift. So we gotta do as much as we can, but save as much energy through the workout. Right. So, and uh, uh, Heath Evans will be there. I see. Heath Evans will be there. Um, He's not just motivate. making shakes, right? He's not He's making, well, he is making way. shakes today. <laughs> <laughs> well, ignore my form on this stuff, <laughs> but I'm strong. <laughs> but for this stuff, uh, a little extra motivation, um, a little push, and uh, it is something. And uh, and also, if you can give me your your insight into like uh, you know belts, elbow straps, wrist straps, because I see. All the guys that uh, that I follow, my friends, that they're doing more, uh, you know, PR lifts. They're always wearing something. Uh, so I'm kind of curious: is that, you know, is that a smart thing to do, or is that the right way to do it, or how yeah. much does that how much does that increase your PR if you wear a belt or not? We're gonna go that over all that because yeah. uh, th that stuff helps. Uh, putting on a, a belt, um, knee sleeves, elbow sleeves, uh, wrist straps, all those kind of things help. Mike's trying to be politically correct here. <laughs> it's a good question, right? It, it is if you're trying to do a single and it really matters to you to get 25 pounds more or something, yeah. then I would do that. So, um, for, so for Instagram, you wear it. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess, I guess you'd wear it for Instagram. And for, and for the actual niche group of people that understand powerlifting, you don't wear it. Well, here's the thing. Um, I don't believe in, in wearing that equipment um, unless you are a power lifter. Okay. So, and the reason why I say that is because then you're going to do a lot more meets, a lot heavier weight. So let's say that you are an entrepreneur, your body means something to you, but you're not going to be singling out all the time. Mm -hmm. So what you did is you just set yourself up for a fail because you just did more weight with the equipment and now you're going to train lighter weights, but going off your percentage of the heavier weights without the equipment. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to continue to wear that equipment, which in time is going to make certain body parts weaker because yeah. you're babying it then. And I don't think for you, I'd recommend it. Okay. So what you're saying is the mistake that it gets made is you use the help from the reps to determine your actual lifting rep range when you're not using it and therefore you're lifting too heavy. Yeah, and that's, that's for the guys that are like the bodybuilders or, or the guys that are the weekend warriors or the fitness guys that just go into train. Uh, for the elite power lifters, 100% use it. Is it maybe a cool little test for, for everyone watching to do like one lift with and one lift without? It would be, it would show them the difference because a, a belt helps, knee sleeves, knee wraps, wrist wraps, all these things help. I would ask yourself, is it more important in the long run 
that you lift 25 pounds more or 50 pounds more um, on those singles relative to creating a stronger body over time. What if that extra 25 pounds gets you an extra 25,000 likes? Yeah, when it comes down, to, it's a great question because that is technically what we're we're yeah. we're basing this off of. Sure, it's going to get you twenty five thousand likes, and it's going to continue that way for the next ten years. And then after those ten years, you're going to be so broken. It's also going to give you twenty five thousand dollar medical bill. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's a give and take. I think the one thing that we've been talking a lot about lately is transparency. What do people really attach to? And. I think his messaging has always been so consistent now for 30 years. You know, and it's, it's Mike O'Hearn's message. You have a huge, massive following that have gotten to know who you are, what you are, and what they like about you. I think the more transparency you give them um, yeah. with what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how it works for you, I think is ultimately what people engage with. Um, but yeah, you, we birthday squatted, you know? Um, if we put some heavy sleeves on these knees, those 315 numbers that he's done for 53 reps before. 54. 54, yeah. you know, I've hit out 41. Th those numbers could jump drastically with the right equipment. Is that it's what you call it? you brought that up, because I didn't even think about this. Well, let's go back to the birthday squats, because this is going to answer your question about using equipment and not using equipment. Do you know what, our, what his birthday squats are? He hits oh, 315 for reps. We, we put a 12-inch box under the hips and try to hit that depth. And you just can't rack it. But what I do is I do my age. But I started this when I was 17 years old. So before you were even thought of from your mom and dad, <laughs> I was doing this. And I started this, obviously, um, 32, 33 years ago, I started um, birthday squats. And so at 17, I went in with 315 with my uh, four brothers. And we all squatted 315 for our ages on my birthday. And I continued that every year. And it's something I don't train for. It's just something I can go to mentally and turn it on. And so the other year, we, we go up to 47, 48 reps, and then 49, and now I got to do 50. And so the point was that back when I was 22 and I was training with Tom Plaz, I did 54. Long story short, the point was that um, it wasn't Atlas that carried the bull as a child. A calf, he had the calf on his shoulders. Um, this is Greek mythology, but he carried the calf on his shoulder when he was a kid, and then it continues forward through his life, and at the, as, as an older man, he's now jacked and carrying a bull, mm -hmm. but technically it's the same, yeah. but he just continued to carry the calf until it became such a huge bull, and so my point was when I saw that as a kid, I go, wow, that is incredible, so I will continue to do 315, even though I'm getting older, which means you're getting weaker, even though I get into my 40s and 50s, I'm still going to do those kind of reps. Yeah. And I'm going to make it harder on myself as I get older. Because 17 reps at, 315, at, at, 17 reps at 315 when I was 17 wasn't that hard for me. Because mm -hmm. I was a 600-pound you know, squatter at that age. But every year it gets harder because I'm getting older and the reps are getting more. Yeah. That's what life's about. And you talked about this on the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, you continued to do things, and then you went into a huge battle with yourself and came out even stronger. And you're still a pup. Mm -hmm. yeah. How old are you? 29. Holy crap, get out. Yeah, right? <laughs> and you're so successful at this age. Yeah. So imagine the next 10 years, and you got a little angel now. Yes. Don't you want to be better in 10 years than yeah, you are? Of course. And, and, and if you tell the world, well, 29, you're peaked. This is it. This is the best you're ever going to look. What would you say to them? Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait. It's funny. You and Mona are both 29. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my point is that I, I would do this in a, in a sense that you do the best number for you for your day. Um, if you feel like you want to put on a belt and walk out with a little heavier, we do the belt. Yeah, I, th I think because uh, I do get a lot of questions, that's why I brought it up from my uh, from my followers. who are always you know seeing other other guys using wrist wraps, belts. I I generally try to stay away from it myself. Um, I would use a belt sometimes, if, if, for example, my back was a little bit tired from you know a back day the day before, and then I'm doing legs the day after or something. Uh, but I I never really used it for a full out one rep max. Um, 
Wouldn't you say consistency is probably key, Mike? So Mark Bell, our boy, who is one of the best ever, when you watch him train, he's going to have you know his, his wraps on, he's going to have his sleeves on, Yeah. but it's every single time. I don't know if I've ever seen Mark not train when he's not in, in his equipment. And so, and then when he goes for his heavy days, he's in his equipment. But yeah. I, I remember those times that you tried to put those wraps on me. It, it made, I felt so weak under the ball. I didn't like being so confined, confined you know? Yeah. Now I've had the yeah. knee sleeves on that feel, oh, oh wow, this does add, especially when you get those heavy reps, you, you yeah. can spring out of those things yeah. depending on how stiff they are. But his I, world I, is just consistency. Do what you yeah. do. Yeah, consistency. I, yeah. But I think what would be really cool to, to kind of show everybody is let's get the one rep max without without first. And like then get, put the stuff on. And then try putting it on and s see if you can add a little bit now more. Look, I'm hoping that works. Or maybe the same weight, but then is it see, easier? Easier. And let's hope that works. Um, one thing that is going to be interesting is, and you've worn belts before, but if you haven't worn a belt or haven't worn wrist straps or elbow sleeves or knee sleeves, it's actually a, a, almost a little bit of a different lift and you have to get used to it. But I think, I mean, I think I've, you've I've done belts before. before yeah, so, yeah, and you before. wrist wraps? Also. Knee yeah. sleeves? Also. All yeah. right, then, then you're good for this. Um, I just don't think Mona will allow it, but we'll try. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. You haven't seen the gym yet, huh? Mm -hmm. Grab your coffee. Don't forget that. <laughs> Oh, you feel Ooh, that? I gave him the free workout and, and some black oh, coffee. Make me some of that too. Oh boy. Nice. Cool. <laughs> and the bar is set for you. Wow. Where is that? We've only got 175 pound dumbbells for you though. So you yeah. can't you can't go above 175. <laughs> got power block and that's, that's something up. else I wanted to test at some point as well. Dumbbell bench press. Can I put this here? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a coaster. All right. Is this what you're going to lift in? These are the shoes? Yeah. Okay. Is that the first mistake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, we, uh, that's great footage for his fans. Yeah. In, 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 the, the, Air, in the Air Max shoes. Yeah. I would, I would rather a solid. Flat, huh? Yeah. Uh, more of a basketball, something that doesn't have a lot of stuff. Tell them why. Um, the feet are going to move in and out. And that's uh, everything's just so important when you're doing a single. It's any little movement, mostly when you're Barefoot? squatting. Barefoot would be great. Yeah. Have you ever done it before? Uh, yeah. Then perfect. Uh, for all of you guys out there, barefoot would be the way to go uh, if you don't got lifting shoes. And this morning, yeah. I'll always train legs the first day back from flights. Unless that flight took us 24 hours to get back, and so we went in and did legs. But a couple of our guys had some shoes on like this cross training when well, you watch them you know they're I mean, they, they are basketball shoes but they do have a quite a high heel yeah well so like, what do you think like you only work up today on your single and squat just get one yeah. even if it was like even if it was 385 you know and you i'm thinking 425 right. it's easy he's got a great He's got a great narrow stance body blame squat yeah i, I think from I think from it's where i'm gonna fail Earlier than my legs is my back, gotcha. because I I actually don't deadlift a lot because yeah. I, I just wanted to limit the injuries the last five years. Yeah, watch him squat because you, know, you can see why his hamstrings are so developed. High bar, it is moderately high bar, yeah. and, and it's a, a, a somewhat of a narrow, but it's also a very much uh, he, he comes from the knees instead of the hips. Yeah, wow. So so you're. You're making your squat as hard as it possibly can be, basically. I think it's how he learned to squat. Yeah. yeah. So you probably got great hip flexibility, and it's his knees drive more forward, yeah. and then he sinks straight down. Yeah. yeah. Like when we squat, I mean, we are just we're getting our big rear ends so back, yeah. back, back, back. We, we just we want to stay like in our no, yeah, our yeah. power force, you know. So. Show him, show him a squat. Yeah, I mean, if I'm gonna squat, it's gonna be like this. So, just so you guys see, see why don't you do this again? So see how this came forward? So this is a great bodybuilding squat. Just so you guys understand, look at his quads. Well, look, look, at these, look at these <laughs> things. All right, now you jump up here and do a power squat. See where his knees are now? They're back and his ass is back. Yeah. So I, what I always struggle with with that form is getting deeper. 
And how do you get deeper? Well, depending on the placement of the bar, well, if, if you're a more of a high course. bar, it, is, it will drag you forward. Where you see Mike and I, when we set that thing back, it's it's resting on rear delts. And so uh, that bar naturally leverages you as that rear end goes back, you know? Which, you have beautiful quads, I have a big squat. So with my football room, <laughs> it was about, it was all about what we call the caboose. It's, you know, fast hamstring, big butt. Yeah. So this, counterproductive in my world, yeah. doesn't create speed, doesn't create power. Yeah. So it's, it's different worlds. Gorgeous legs, he's worked with both worlds and he can do both. Yeah. He can power squat with the best of them, but then we can put, you know, 500 pounds on our back and bury crazy stuff too that he's helped me work up to. Well, let's see what you got, man. So what are we doing first? Bar is set. Let me check the height on you. We're going to do squat first. Uh, a couple things here. Today we're going to work with his form. I'm going to make this clear. We're going to work with his form on his best single on what he can do now. Um, next time, when he has more time, We'll kind of go over form and change his form for more of a power squat. But for everybody out there, however you're training and however you like to train in that form, like for him today, um, that's what you would max off of. I wouldn't switch your form to a power squat um, just for the purpose of lifting heavy that day. I would lift heavy like how you lift heavy. And that way, if you do go to a program that says 70% or 60, use 60% for this reps, then go to 70%. Because most powerlifting is off a of percentage. Um, and so that's how I go. I'd stay with your form, especially today. And here's something else so you guys are understanding this. You face the mirror when you squat. Yeah. We're gonna face away yeah. today. Um, and again, it's an I think. Um, and I know that this new age thing is everybody's about keeping your eyes straight and your neck straight. Well, we're athletes. And you played soccer, right? right? Did you ever always keep your head straight when you were playing? Or were you moving around looking for things? Moving around. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's Generally where you want to go. So you want to go up. <laughs> and your feet were going different ways and you're coming back this way and then you're juking it. Or you're trying to uh, uh, get this guy out of your way and you got the ball and you're moving it over here. So it's interesting with today's society how they talk about your eyes position when you're lifting weights. Like you gotta keep your neck straight with your spine and not move this and not move that. It's like you're so locked in that you're rigid that any weird movement and you get injured. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the new age is doing that. It's time to bring it back to the old age. Yeah, yeah. I, I want you guys to understand that the vertebrae is made to move. You can look up, you can look down, this doesn't kill you. It doesn't hurt you. Um, it will be awkward for him today. So if it continues to be awkward, facing away from the mirror, uh, we will turn him into the mirror. Uh, I like everybody to to lift away from the mirror. That way you're not watching yourself. I'd rather you feel it um, relative to watch. Let's do one more warm up. Sure. We did a warm up five reps. We're gonna do another five reps just to warm up the body, giving out no energy really. Um, and again, how can we warm up, get enough blood in there to where it feels good, and then go for a single. Look at that depth. And again, this is a, for all you bodybuilders out there, this is a incredible, incredible bodybuilding squat. And you can see that, look at the legs, look at the legs. <laughs> you can see, well, come in here. You can see the fibers. Look at the teardrop. Mm -hmm. And this is him off season. And you can still see fibers. My genetics don't put any fat on my, my legs. No. I wish I did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you ready, Heath? You know what's I ask him how many years of competitive soccer. Right, I'm sure your followers know that you know about, about 12 years. Major soccer background, professional level as well. Yeah. So what's going to be really interesting is next time around when Mike gets him into more of a power squat, you're going to see his whole childhood, his whole athletic career take over, and his squat will improve literally in one workout. Where maybe some of you at home, it might take three or four weeks. And why I say that is he spent his whole life in running mechanics. 
where his hamstring glute were constantly firing, firing, firing. And so what's gonna happen is as soon as Mike puts him in a truly powerful position, everything that he worked from, you started playing soccer, what, four or five? Yeah. Young. And so everything that you started to develop as a young kid, you've still got the tank. And the muscle memory from all the explosive running is gonna be immediately put to work when he puts you in a powerful explosive position to squat. Because we can't possibly be really, really explosive out of a position like this. Our knees are in the weakest position possible. But as soon as we load hamstring and glute, where it's, you know, if we're gonna vertical, if we're gonna vertical like this, we're not gonna vertical knees down and, and anchor, you know? So it's that'll be great footage to watch how fast he gets really, really strong. It's a great point. You gotta remember, uh, Heath Evans played 10 years at the highest level of the NFL um, at one of them, just a, a blood force trauma position, uh, the fullback position. So he played 10 years um, with the NFL and he played for the greatest teams, the Saints, won a Super Bowl with them, uh, played with uh, my greatest team, the Seattle Seahawks. Um, and then he played for this team called... The Patriots! Oh, wow. Wow. I know, I know what's up. Tom Brady, <laughs> Tom, yeah, that's who he played for, whatever. But you got a couple guys at the top of the leagues, you know, um, so just the, the knowledge that he just spilled uh, is true in what's gonna happen to him. I'm gonna take you to 225 now. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't do a lot of warm ups at 135, but how do you feel? Feel good, I think maybe one more in between set. Okay, so 185? Yeah, just to get my knees fully. Perfect. Press. But again, all this is new for you because you're not a guy that takes five minutes between sets. No. Um, so mentally, what's that going to do to you? Today's, I need you to be cautious and feel uh, comfortable doing that. Right. Um, another thing I want you to do now is start getting off your feet. Believe it or not, I know it's 185, but I want you instantly to go from here to here and yeah. relax. Yeah. And take good four minutes, five minutes, and totally recover. Just, uh, just joining in. So I'm here in Mike's house, uh, and I've reached out to him again. Uh, asking him to take me through his, uh, basically through how to test your uh, your one rep maxes uh, safely, properly, how to get the most out of it. Um, because obviously you guys, if you're, maybe some of you are very experienced in it already, but I think most of you, uh, you know, you get inspired to go to the gym by seeing guys lifting these incredible weights. Um, it's important to do it in a safe way uh, and in a way that uh, you can continue to do it. So who better than to, to show me that than Mike. So hopefully the lifts will be reasonably respectable. <laughs> Mike would say, get your right mind right. Yeah, I guess We're not doubting that you're gonna crush this thing. <laughs> yeah, we gotta crush it. Uh, first thing I wanna just touch base on is, you see how pumped they are? So in between uh, workout and stuff, remember a little soccer? They start getting yeah, too yeah. pumped. Start shaking out a little bit, shake it out a little bit. Um, so what we're trying to do here is it's a lot like just anything that you've got. Try to get some of that blood out of there and let it circulate through the whole body. Um, so you're saying that you're stronger when you're not pumped? 100% stronger when you're not pumped. Um, the, the one thing is, uh, think about your conditioning days with in soccer. The more the lactic acid set those quads, that, that low back would start to get a little tight. That booty yeah, would get yeah. tight. You yeah. know, and so yeah. those we can hear things. us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, spray information. Um, you, you're, when you when you sprint or you do anything, you're, those guys moderately or they hold up on their early runs and then they blast through it. So it's the same thing here. Um, it's least amount of blood in the body, enough to where you mentally feel safe. Um, but yeah, in the body or the muscle. So I'm just to get some blood out. <laughs> yeah. <just, laughs> yeah. <Let's go. laughs> Um, so I'm going to have you uh, go 225 now. You've done enough warm-ups. Um, one of the big thing is you wouldn't warm up, especially you wouldn't warm up the way that you normally work out. Like you want to do 315, you might do three or four sets. So I'm going to start holding you back on one and do more, and I'm going to have you start exploding through this. Yeah. Um, so like you're taking out lot, tons of water. Um, one of the things I really want you to do is again, and for everybody at home listening to this, 
go through the motion now. Now use the speed. Now go back to that form and don't flex through it like a bodybuilder. Um, the point now is, is to use your balance, your athletic ability, and just down and up. 225 is on the bar. Kilos, that is uh, 100. 100, there we go. Remember, I'm only giving you one rep here. Okay. Uh, so you heard Mike coaching this warm up form. Tommy has said no flexing, bodybuilder. No, nope. relax, relax. He's got Whoa. to take it up. Ah. Walk it up. There we go. You saw more of a power that being smooth as the neck versus a muscle contraction. Relax. Get the blood out of the leg, and then we'll go back in again. We'll take a good two to three minutes now to just recover. We have a special coffee here. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> we have his water here. Oh, shit. And then we got some of his new clothes today, so that was pretty cool. No rush. Give you a little side view here. Strong, strong step. Get set up. Now, I want a big, deep breath before you do this one. Boom. Back up, walk it in. Nice, good pop. And I know you guys hear me say this all the time. Uh, slow, controlled, not today. Take the point I'm saying that on, on the off season when you're training for it, and then go back to the explosion. Um, and, and when Keith and I train, you're gonna see there's times that we go slow and controlled. And that's the majority of the time. Um, but that trigger is still there, it's still within you. Um, and again, he, he played soccer for 12 years at the highest level, so uh, it's one of those things that his athletic ability is there. For you guys at home that haven't worked speed like this, please slowly work into it. Don't just go into the gym one day and so say, I'm going fast. Don't do that. All right, um, 3.15. Uh, we're putting the belt on. They start getting him used to this process now. Let's see that belt in the round first. Let me see what he gave you. Oh. Titan Tour 2014. <laughs> Here we go. Deep breath. Lift it up. Step. Nice. Get ready. Head up. Boom. Boom. Walk it in. Strong. Oh, yeah. Sit down, relax, belt off. All right, so you guys saw that. Yeah. Okay, so this is great. Mona's here and she just has something. I'm sorry, I didn't think of this earlier. So not only is the reps important, um, but you came off of a flight yesterday. Yeah. Because I know that I got in at around three o'clock and you got in around four o'clock. Yeah, and you flew from? Amsterdam. Which was how long? Luckily, I got a direct flight, so oh. 12 hours. Is it too, okay. too bad? Yeah. Nice. So 12 hours, and then he's coming in today to do a single. Um, Mona's point was, what did you eat? Um, and, and tell us what your protocol was for food getting ready for today. Yeah, so I already had this idea a couple of days ago, and then I, I messaged you, and I, I told you about my idea. Um, so I've just been eating a lot more carbs. Okay. Because I've, I've been doing the intermittent fasting still for for the past two, three months, trying to maintain a lower body fat percentage, but I've been limiting my carbs a lot. So the last, uh, say about 48 hours, I've been really carving up. I love it. How much yeah. carbs gram-wise do you think? Four, three, 400 grams at least. Nice. Yeah, so I haven't been really counting it. I've just been, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you this, uh, three, 400 for a single or going for your maxes is not a lot still. Yeah, it's not a least, lot. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's the least. I, I guarantee Heath Evans could easily take in breakfast. <laughs> <Not a> breakfast. <laughs> yeah, uh, you got to figure that each meal he could take in a hundred grams, yeah. and he could do easy six hundred grams uh, going in for a single. So I recommend the same thing you were doing. Maybe um, even more. But I think your body was was maybe craving more or. Is it comfortable with three or four hundred yeah. because of where you were depleted to? Yeah. Um, I think you and me were similar this way because 
uh, I'll run around at 50 grams most of the time and then go up to 150, 200, and I'll still lift heavy. Yeah. Um, so our bodies are a little bit more used to it, where, where Mona and Heath... Yeah. And the pizza, way, please. Usually the way I measure it is I know that we if I have, have like, an, like a higher carb day, oh. I'll gain like two, three pounds. That's it? At, at least. At least. At least. At least. So, it's too bad. so literally my weight from three days ago to now, I've, I've increased. Ten pounds, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but, but when you say you, you ate carbs, like what, what kind of carbs? Because I people mean, are going to say, I oh, start, I'm going to go I eat started, pizza or you're going to eat like brown rice or sweet potato or like what? Uh, just a lot of like rice. Rice. Okay. Last, uh, it's and like also, us. Yeah. We eat Do a lot you of rice. carbs or, or food is food? In what sense? You mean not, not rice food? is the same as bread. Uh, 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 I do. I do believe that it's been, from my own testing on my own body that the glycemic index is important. So if it's too fast of a sugar, I can get higher peaks and crashes. Or see, I agree with that. So I try to. Yeah, it's been experimenting. Well, yeah, yeah. Come be with me. And both it's <laughs> our body. That's a great point. It, 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 they, they both have a great point. Yeah. Our bodies are used to the low glycemic, so it, it stays in our system a little bit longer and it burns slower. Where uh, Mona and Heath um, can have the high glycemic and it doesn't interfere with their day, it doesn't make them hyper and then drop. Um, where for me, it does. Yeah, because your insulin response is stronger. Like, what? It's, a, it's a good thing for building muscle. Yes. But it's terrible for burning fat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, I could I could have a pie of pizza right now and be like wired. <laughs> yeah, uh, where I would want to take a nap afterwards. Yeah. Um, if I if I bring my my carbs up to three four hundred grams a day, I'm, I'm just, I start gaining muscle. Really you and I, you and I I think uh, and they probably don't even know this. You and I don't want to be huge. No, no. And, and, and I don't think people know this. I'm right now. What am I weighing? That is such a lie, Michael. <laughs> Mike's body wants to be 286 and My back. body okay. wants to be. Yeah. At all times. Right, 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 right. He, he I don't himself. want to be. I don't want to be monstrous. Um, and I could easily get to 300 pounds if I stopped cardio and, and just ate a high carbohydrate diet. I could get to 300. A good 300. Um, yeah. With yeah. abs. But it doesn't help me in my career today. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I could go right back up to an 800 deadlift and 800 squat yeah. and a 600 bench. But again, yeah. that doesn't help me today. No, 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 commercially doesn't help. Yeah. I even notice it when I, when I get really, really shredded and in shape, and then I go to the gym and have a high carb day, pump up, and I look huge in the photos or the videos. My, a lot of my followers, they, they, they don't like it even. <laughs> they don't like it, and I understand it. It's, it. It starts to look too out of reach for them. Yeah. So instead of motivating them, it kind of puts them up. down. That's a great statement. So, but it, you can do that as long as you tell them, like, listen, this is why this I look why like I look way. So the, I put up a picture the other day, um, and it's one of these pictures where I'm lean, and then I carved up, and I, I dried out. And so I look monstrous. And Heath even put up a funny post and goes, uh, uh, this is the most natty shot Mike's put up. Sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> look nothing natty about it. It looked very uh, unnatty. Uh, unnatty. Um, yeah. His triceps had three different sets of yeah. triceps. <laughs> yeah. But I was 20 pounds lighter than I am now. Yeah. yeah so yeah. visually, yeah. visually, it yeah. looks different. Yeah. When I go low carb, I can look flat and look thin and small like a model. Um, relative to if you fill out a couple days, then I look like a whole different person. Exactly. That's, that's, I didn't even think about right, Let's get him on this next set. Yeah. We, we got, got to here, I'm going to show you guys one thing. Now, this is going to be surprising you. I want this tight, okay? Sure. So, to do this for you guys, jump over here. Uh, your training partner is gonna get here, he's gonna pull it a little bit extra, make sure it's in, and then try to put those in there, as deep as you can. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. The reason why you want that tight is you want that already sucked in, because uh, you're gonna get the breath, and then your <laughs> abs are gonna push against it. We got 365 pounds in the bar. Uh, watch how easy this is. Come on, kiddo. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, this is gonna be nothing for him. Pick up strong. Let's go, Kelly. Uh, slow down. Set good. Set good. Wait for it. Wait for it. You ready? Down and up. Boom. Boom. 
<coughs> nice, walk it in. Thank you. Hands, easy. Good. Tommy, how much you weigh today? Uh, 96 kilo. 96 kilos, yeah. so for us uh, stupid Americans, Almost 220. 210? 210. 210. 96, yeah, 2468, yeah. So, Tommy hit up Mike, said, hey, let's max out, teach me how to do it properly. You can see the physique is carved out, filled out. Bigger than, bigger than most. Uh, everybody walking, watching at home, and I'll give you a, a side view on this next one. We'll get a double camera angle. I want you guys to understand, again, his depth is actually below what you need to go to. But again, this is how he squats, um, and that's where he reverses out of. So we're going to stay with his form for you guys at home. Don't need to go that deep. Um, the speed is great, and the only other thing now is we're going to hit four plates, and now it's time to change that mindset and get a little angry under the bar. Pick it up, um, and this will be an interesting thing. When he picks it up now, I need it to be light on your back, so I want to breath, lift it, and that way it triggers the nervous system and tells it this is light. Step back, take your time, get in position. Another, you breathe that one out, you breathe another breath in, and you hold your breath through the lift. You do not release that energy. Um, and I know a lot of people were taught to release that energy. By releasing it, you're giving up your, your strength. Keep the energy inside, keep that breath inside, down and up. Because it tweaks your form so slightly. You are so powerful out of such an awkward position. Yeah, I can go up drastically. Like quick, pounds. quick. Yeah, 100 pounds. I'm not kidding you. Because you still have... <laughs> you just got excited. Look at him. He's excited. Yeah. You have a lot of muscle memory. Because like this, when, when you grow, run, 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 sprint, 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 jump, jump, jump. Like, it, it doesn't really truly go away. No. And so as soon as you turn that back on, because like, your quads are getting you out so fast. Just wait till you can use your glutes and hammies to get you up out of there. H, let's line that bar up. So we're just making sure the bar is centered correctly. That way the hands get the right feel. There we go. All right, guys, we're at 405. And what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna knee wrap. Uh, we're gonna put the belt on again. We're gonna do some um, wrist wraps. And the reason why we're doing this at 405, even though he's a 455, maybe a 500 today, is because I don't want him to give up energy on this and I want him to start getting used to the knee wraps. So that's why you would use them early when you're doing your single. Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. You, again, it doesn't matter if you're doing 405 today, it matters if you're doing 455 or 500. So save as much energy as you can and make this look like a joke. And so your mind also, as you're going up, you know, when you step away from this, you're gonna go, dude, that was, that was absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. So, that's what's next. We're gonna do these, and what I'll do is like on the powerlifting meet, believe it or not, you wanna save as much energy, and that's why you got your training partners there. And I'm gonna wrap his knees, um, and I can also get them on tighter than he can. So, it's uh, by his last lift today, they're gonna be uncomfortable. We're gonna get some crazy squats today, kiddo. Oh, snakes. Come on right here, Bob. This needs to be perfect for my boy today. Nice. How's that feel? Good. No problem? No. Yeah. That's how you wrap it. Uh, no special lap. <laughs> Almost four years. I've never seen Mike wait for food. <laughs> so again, right now I'm not even pulling it. As you see the lifts go on, you'll see me go like this and pull this tight and go around. But on this lift, just enough to feel safe.
very tight, yeah. very tight, very awkward. Throw that bad boy on. straps so when that weight starts pushing you back you still feel safe and strong on this and again just trying to make this as easy as possible what's the most you've ever squatted uh <laughs> i think 220 so that would be another 40, 10 kilos on here. That's in pounds. Uh, four. This is 180. Yeah, I think it's about 420. Okay. Uh, no. We'll do the four, math. 440. Something like that. So this okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> another uncomfortable. Strong. Hands on there. Pick this up. Oh, step slow. Set up strong. Wait for it. Get strong. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. Boom. Oh. Slow. Slow. Open the hand. I mean, could you at least struggle a little bit? <laughs> Take all that off. Yeah. Take it off. Just think if you would have five hundred dollars. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, we took a couple minutes here. We're resting up. He is getting used to this whole knee wraps and everything and the belt. Right now, it's the hardest thing is putting on all the, the stuff and doing the lift without giving up that extra energy. So, uh, again, for you, you feel like the knee wraps are safer. Um. I guess I would say it kind of feels like the, your knee is a little bit more stable. It shakes less. So right. I, think, I think it does kind of take a lot of the load off your ligaments and tendons. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or of course, you just mentioned, is that better for you? Or is that risking injury when you don't use them? Um, so I think you have to really determine, is your goal to reach a PR without any equipment, or is it you're going to reach a PR with equipment and stick to that, so that there's no uh, risk of crossing over and making a mistake, right? Yeah, I'm 100% I'm use equipment if you're a power lifter, um, especially getting ready for a meet. Uh, I know that we're gonna go back to power lifting here in December, and we're gonna do a 12 week uh, training plan, and we'll probably use equipment for that 12 weeks. Um, but for the last two years, no equipment. So um, it, it, it's good for some stuff. And, um, I think for the long term, I would never train all year with a belt no. and belts, wraps. Especially taking off that belt takes a half an hour. Yeah, <laughs> takes more energy to take off the belt than to, to squat. This is, uh, for you uh, Americans, 455 pounds. So. Uh, let me do this, which is uh, one second. Is it though? Kilos. And you've done 220 kilos? Yeah. Okay. I mean, to 15 or to 20? We need to know the truth. It's been five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, about, I think 220. So you, that was uh, 485. So it's almost five plates. If you get five plates yeah. today, you beat it. Yeah. All right. That's more than five plates. That's more than what I did before. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Five exactly. plates would be more. I think it was, because how much is this? A kilo? This is 206. And that's uh, 20 pounds? 25. 25 pounds. Oh, 25. Okay, so I had a 35 pound. Right, exactly. Everyone? Yep. 
Here we go. Big squat coming up. Here we go. Hey, did you get this on? Sure will. Yeah, right there. I need some photos. Push it sideways. You want it on story or? Yep. Sorry? Photos. Story or sideways? No, no just photos. 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 I know. Everything's tight, awkward. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Still and slow. Set up. Wait until you're comfortable. Wait until you're comfortable. Yeah. Boom. Lock it in. Now I'm starting to feel some stiff. Our next lift um, is going to be the lift. Uh, he is going to hit 500 pounds today. Um, this is it. We're going to take a good four to five minutes easily to rest up and hit this. Uh, this will be the most he's ever squatted in his life. Um, and he came off a plane yesterday. So imagine you give me 12 weeks with him doing uh, a proper power squat. You got a guy that is a natural 600 pound squatter. Um, just so you guys understand that, that that's such a difference, um, both mentally and physically. And it kind of shows you his athletic background really plays into how he lives his life and how he diets and how he trains and how he lives life. So um, for you power lifters, you can look like this and be strong. So, technically, that is actually 495 for you guys. That's a straight up 500. Locked and loaded, ready to go. Here we go. Big 500. Weight's loaded. Set the bar. Get every little detail. Every little detail. And it goes good. One more. Here we go. Woo! You grab Dora. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Head into it. Head into it. Pick it up strong. Now slowly step back. Slow. Slow. Get set. Get set. Get set. Come on. Come on. Come on. Boom. Thirty-nine kilos. Ooh. Grab some photos. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. 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 Here